Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks for doing your Halloween face paint. My face paint is a half skull mask. It's based upon this video and she does a fantastic job of showing you how to do this face paint. What I'd like to show you is how to break down a picture that you would like to use as your face paint, along with some tips and tricks that I use to get the effects that I want. I am still learning all the time and I'd love to hear of any tips you've discovered. So let's look at setting up. This is what everything looked like after I'd painted my face, but it's not too different. You can see I've got all my brushes and sponge and water, all the colors I want, and some toilet paper or tissues and a cloth for soaking up excess paint or water and removing paint that might have gone on my face in the wrong place. The first thing I want to paint is my background shape. In this case, my shape has a clean edge because it's a mask, so I'm going to use a brush. I like using a flat brush with a rounded edge and a short handle. This allows me to get closer to the mirror and it stops me from poking myself in the eye when I'm painting someone else. If I can, I like to start in a place where it won't matter if I make a mistake, like my forehead. Here I've got a big blob at the start because I had a little bit too much paint on my brush. That's fine. It's still within my mask shape that I can make up as I go along. I'm outlining all the parts of my mask that will be white at one time. This thick line means that I can fill in the shape nice and quickly without having to be too neat. One of the trickiest things about painting faces is that they're not flat like paper and you'll find your brush doing all sorts of strange things as it goes over the bumps and lumps of your face. Let's speed things up. The goal for filling in a large shape is to get an even colour. This can be hard when you have a little palette and a little brush because you have to mix up lots of little batches of paint which may not be enough for the whole shape and they might be different consistencies depending upon how much water you have in the paint and how many times you've swirled your brush around. I try to mix up enough paint to cover the whole shape and then load up the largest brush that I have, which today is not very big. Often I will use the brush to load the paint onto a sponge because the sponge can apply the paint over a larger area without creating brush lines. But it can also lift paint off. I'm finding I have more control applying paint with the brush and then using the sponge to even out the thicker areas. If you want the paint to blend evenly, try to work quickly so the paint is still a bit wet. Unfortunately, there's a breeze today drying out my paint, but the good news is uneven areas usually won't get noticed once you have finished your lines and details. Let's do some shading. I've mixed some white paint with a hint of black to make gray, and I'm swapping to a smaller brush. If you can, always work from your lightest colors through to your darkest colors. It's always easier to paint over a light color if you make a mistake than it is to paint over black. Let's look more closely at painting a shadow. Start with the darkest part of the shadow, usually up against the edge, then Flick colour out from the dark part towards the light part. If you want to blend the shadow but the base coat is too dry, add a little bit of that base colour and then sponge it along the feathered edge. Using a darker colour or a narrower shadow will usually make the shadow look deeper, like your face is caving in. I'll be using black for the holes in my face where the darkest shadows will be. You can also use shadows to make lighter areas seem brighter or stand out more. If you look at a real skull, the edges of the eye sockets really stand out. So I'm putting some shadows right near the edge of the eye socket to make those edges really pop. 
let's make the edge of the cheekbone stand out while flattening the rest of the bone with a shadow as well. Now I'm using the edge of the brush to do some thin lines coming out from my lips. These will be the shadows between my teeth. To fix up a shadow I didn't like, I've used thick white paint starting to look spooky. Time for some outlines. And I'm still using the same brush. Another skull video I watched recommended having the nostrils different sizes. So I've done that this time, but I'm not sure if it makes much difference. Just like with the white, I'm outlining the shapes in black and then colouring them in. Having a larger brush handy loaded with the same colour makes this process quicker. I always get a bit nervous when it comes to doing the outline. Just take a deep breath and go for it. You'll find that different things will affect the line. The amount of paint can make the line blobby if there's too much or scratchy if there's not enough. The brush angle and how hard you press can also make a big difference. Whoops, bumped my nose. I'll fix that later. I've swapped to a small round brush and I'm just going to use the tip of it to create fine lines for the base of my teeth. Going around tight corners can also be a bit easier with a fine round brush. As you go around corners, if there's not enough paint on your brush, it, the brush can separate and create a feathered line. Now for a thin line of black along the inside of the lips. This helps to cover any uneven starts to my teeth lines. And I am almost done. I'm just adding some little squiggly cracks coming in from the edges of my mask. I'm barely touching my face with the tip of my brush and my naturally shaky hands help with the effect. I hope you've enjoyed these hints and tips for skull face paint. Have fun with your Halloween face paint.